Just how badly do some people need to behave to get dumped? Pretty badly, according to this film. Mother, may I sleep with danger. And yes, that's what the film's actually called. I'm Jay Harang, and I talk about soft porn and stalker movies. You should subscribe. So we start with this girl, Erin, who's being dropped off by local stud, Kevin Shane. Kevin Shane just dropped me off. Her friend on the phone asks, what about the guy you've been seeing? Oh, him. Ugh. He's just so dramatic, the way he's all over me. I certainly wouldn't want to be that guy. She says she's planning on dumping this creep tonight, but he's turned up at the door. This is Billy, and he's been watching her from the bushes. Come again? He's brought her a ring and a teddy bear, but sounds like it's a bit late for all that. When they get in the house, he's all over her. She's clearly not up for it, but he's not taking no for an answer. He's like, come on, I only need five minutes. The way he's acting, I can't imagine he's even going to need two. When they get up to her room, he's like, um, where are all the pictures of me and the poems I wrote you? Why are they in a box? She's like, oh, we're repainting. He's like, don't lie to me and starts getting physical. I bet if my name was Kevin Shane. She tells him to calm down and he starts smashing stuff. She's like, okay, I'm calling the police, but Billy can't have that. <laughs> so after smashing her head in with a chopping board, he cleans up the mess, packs a bag full of her stuff, and shoves her body in the trunk of his car. At an unspecified time later, we meet Laurel. She's in college, and she's on the track team, so she runs everywhere. She bumps into this guy, Jackson. He's obsessed with her and keeps trying to get her to come and see his rubbish band. I uh, think I'm traveling with the team to the practice meet in Portland. I have all this laundry, plus I have uh, start seeing somebody. <laughs> when Laurel gets to track practice, her coach tells her she's not going to be on the team anymore because her mum's called her and told her she has an eating disorder. Sticking her nose where it doesn't belong. She's like, but I'm the best on the team. I'm sorry, but it's not always about who's best. <laughs> Well, it sort of is. You run a track team. Don't judge me, but I'd take the faster girl with the eating disorder. Anyway, next we see Laurel with her mum in Seattle. She's like, Mum, you need to back off with this eating disorder business. But that argument is quickly put to bed so we can move on with the plot. I met this great guy, Mum. Funny and he's smart. Mmm, can I meet him? I can ask him to come down with me to Seattle. There's only one condition, though. No, no judgment. judgment. <laughs> <laughs> And here's the big meeting. I'd like you to meet Kevin Shane. Hi. That's not Kevin Shane. That's Billy the psycho who killed his ex. But he's going to be called Kevin for the rest of the film. So for the sake of ease, that's what I'll be calling him. Kevin tells Laurel's mum that he's in medical school. My father was on the board of directors at CareShare. Really? She's like, oh, my friend works at CareShare. <laughs> Laurel has also told her mum that Kevin lost his parents. A uh, helicopter skiing accident in Austria. They died doing what they loved. So the meeting seems to have gone okay. As we know, Kevin isn't one for casual relationships, so he follows Laurel everywhere. When she gets back to her dorm from a run, he surprises her. <laughs> I had to get out and run. For two hours? Let's do something really fun on Saturday. Saturday? That's oh, four days from out. now. Uh, Can't you see that I am sorry. crazy about you? I, I don't have a life unless you're in it. Maybe this is moving a little too fast. Just call me Saturday, okay? Oh, now I have to call. You need your space, right? No! I... Oh, dear. Now, most normal people would see some massive red flags here, or at least be shamed into getting rid of him by a roommate. But no, sending flowers to her while she's doing this weird aerobics class seems to have done the trick. So she goes round to his place. The flowers were really beautiful. They really touched me. I thought I was never going to see you again. I love you so much. And then they bang. Oh dear, here comes the real Kevin Shane. He's making a reservation at the Motor Inn for tomorrow. Meanwhile, the fake Kevin has found out that Laurel's mum is trying to set her up with another guy. Now they're in the park. Sometimes you get so serious. <laughs> I am serious. You're so close to the perfect woman. Have you ever thought how you'd look as a blonde? <laughs> you would be spectacular. So incredibly hot. So they're back at Laurel's mum's place and Kevin has brought flowers. What do you think? Her mum doesn't seem too keen. Now Laurel is out at a bar with some friends who are telling her they think Kevin is a bit weird. Yep. Jackson is here too, and Kevin, who's obviously following Laurel, of course, sees her hugging him, so he trashes his little moped. <laughs> Later, Laurel is at her mum's, and her mum has concerns about Kevin. This is the first guy who truly gets me. 
She remains suspicious, so goes to see her friend who works at CareShare. I need some information. How can I help? Laurel's been seeing a young man, and the relationship troubles me. His father was on the board. There hasn't been a board vacancy in three years. I knew it. I fucking knew it. So she knows now that Kevin was lying about his parents. Kevin is at home and I can't work out exactly what's going on here, but somehow he finds out from the credit card company that the real Kevin Shane is coming to town. The motor in. Tomorrow. So he turns up and pretends to work there. Hey, Kevin. Oh, man, Kevin Shane. Philly Jones. So what made you move to Seattle? First class education. Never got the impression you were on the college track. Hey, look, be buddy and grab the rest of my bags from the Jeep, huh? For some reason, fake Kevin hangs around in the bathroom while the real Kevin is showering. Oh, I see. This is the perfect opportunity for fake Kevin to get rid of him. While Kevin's cleaning up that mess, Laurel's mum has decided to share her concerns. We need to talk about Kevin. Who is he? Oh, just some serial obsessive boyfriend who goes around murdering people who get in the way of his relationships. Well, isn't that what most people do? He's the boy I love and want to be with. There are just some things that don't add up. I saw Dr. Zola today. You've been snooping. You're still trying to run my life. Oh well, she tried. Meanwhile, Kevin is burying his latest victim in a flower bed. Hello? I miss you, baby. I miss you too. I got a surprise for you when you get back. I love you. I love you too. And here's the surprise. He's rented a cabin miles away from the campus and all her friends with no phone and nobody around for miles. Huh? I kind of feel like you're pushing. It's not up to your high standards. Is that it? Nothing I ever do is good enough for you. You don't want me to go climb a tower with a gun or... Do you? Excuse me? Looks like she's staying there then. Yeah. Since she's been here, her mum can't get hold of her and is worried. Laurel asked Kevin if the guy turned up to install the phone line. It's gonna be a couple more days. You know, I really don't like being out this far without a phone. Kevin doesn't seem to want to talk about the phone. Ow! Damn it! So probably best not to mention it again. Laurel's mum has resorted to turning up at the college to find her. There's no sign of Laurel, but she does see Kevin. She's like, right, Kevin, where's Laurel? Laurel listens to me now. I'm going to make sure that Laurel knows you're a liar. Laurel and I are in love. Both of us would rather die than let you come between that love. Ooh, that can't be good. When he gets back to the cabin, Laurel's hardly touched her food. He's like, Laurel, you need to eat. Your mum called me and told me you had an eating disorder. She, she told you? I can't believe this. She is completely against us. Well played, Kevin. Good work. Laurel's like, right, I'm calling her. Kevin's like, uh, no, that's what she wants. Let's just live our lives without her. And then they bang. Laurel's mum is still trying to find her, so she's come back to the college. Turns out she's not even turning up to class. You're a very bad girl. Kevin needs to go out today, so he messes with Laurel's car to make sure she doesn't leave the cabin without him knowing. R relationships are a lot of work. But she walks two miles to a payphone and calls Jackson, who picks her up and takes her to town, where she uses a different payphone to call the phone company, as they've still not been to the cabin to install the phone line. Not sure where Kevin was going earlier, but he's now found her and he's watching her again. No order. He never put in for a phone order. I know that he messed with my car. All he wants to do is keep me a prisoner. Right, so you're probably thinking, that's going to be it now. No way she's going back to him. He comes charging after her, unnecessarily bumping into people and sending them flying. <laughs> How much time does it actually save? This always happens in films. It must be quicker to go around. Anyway, he doesn't get to her in time and she goes off on Jackson's scooter. Laurel's mum is looking around Kevin's old apartment. She doesn't find anything apart from a picture of this girl in the trash. It's his last girlfriend, Erin. She goes to the police who have nothing at all on Kevin Shane, but when she's there, she sees another photo of Erin on the missing persons board. She disappeared about two years ago. Kevin had a photograph of her in his apartment. I had a very strong suspicion about a boy named Billy Jones. Please call me if you find out anything. When she gets back, Laura's mum gets a fax from the detective with Kevin's file. But that's not Kevin Shane. Well, it is, but it's not the one she thinks is Kevin Shane. It's not the same boy. Well, it's the only Kevin Shane we've got. What about that other boy, the one you think killed the girl? Billy Jones. I'll see what I can do. Okay, thank you. It looks like Laurel has finally seen some sense and she's packing all her stuff. Kevin gets home, sees she's leaving and totally loses it. She's had to push him over to escape, but at least that's the end of the relationship. 
That's right, she's out with Jackson at a bar and they're dancing. And look, there are people doing the American College Extra Dance. Two hands above the head, a little bounce, and pushing the ceiling. It fits with every song and every style of music. I'm telling you, whenever there are American College students in films, at least one person is doing this in the background. Anyway, obviously Kevin has been watching them, so he follows Jackson into the bathroom and kicks his head in. I'm warning you! I'm not sure that counts as a warning, but never mind. He goes back out, sees Laurel, and convinces her to give him another chance. What? We all need a second chance, don't we? No. So they agree to talk outside. Someone accidentally bumps into Kevin, so he cleans house. Watch it, man. And then he's surprised to find out that Laurel has fucked off. Next day, Laurel waits for Kevin to leave before going back, alone, to get the rest of her stuff. But when she comes out, he's waiting for her. I feel I should point out at this point that even after the way he's behaved, she's still not contacted her mum. Kevin's like, okay, I accept you're leaving, but let's just have one last drink together as friends. That never goes well. But look what his plan was. You thought it was going to be easy to get away from me. While this is going on, Laurel's mum gets a photo faxed to her of the main suspect in the Erin Meadows murder, Billy Jones. He's a killer and he's got my daughter. So Kevin is bundling Laurel into his car, but ironically, he can't get the car to work. So he calls the auto club and uses Laurel's mum's card. Her mum also just happened to have got a flat tyre. So the auto club are fixing two cars on the same account within an hour. The guy fixing her mum's car tells her the other call out was in a place called Barrington. That's on the way to my cabinet. So off she goes to her cabin where Laurel has just woken up from her roofie nap. Where are the car keys? Why do you want to leave? This is kidnapping. No, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. Anyway, then he starts shouting and strangling her. She realizes the only way to save herself is to play along. I love you so much. The next morning, she tries to escape. <gasps> where are you going? <gasps> Why? Open it! <laughs> yep, she's gone back inside the cabin and shut the doors. What an idiot. <laughs> Laurel's mum is on her way, on her own. I'm really not sure how much help she's going to be against Kevin, who's a massive unhinged murderer who can easily deal with groups of men. He also has an axe and he's using it to try and get back into the cabin. Laurel has escaped into the woods, but her mum turns up shouting. Too late. <laughs> so the mum is knocked out and Kevin is chasing Laurel. Laurel gets to this canoe. And don't bother commenting saying, that's a kayak actually, because I don't care. All that matters is she's rubbish in it. So rubbish that Kevin has managed to swim up to the boat and flip it over. Speaking of rubbish, Laurel's mum has woken up. Laurel has managed to swim back to whatever this is called and her mum manages to get there too. But Kevin has jumped out of the water with his axe. <laughs> God, no, I am both of you! No. Laurel pretends she still loves Kevin and it was her mum who was keeping them apart. Somehow he believes her again, but it was just a distraction technique. Forgive me. <laughs> yes! Kevin never surfaces, so it's safe to assume he's dead. Yeah. Right. At an unspecified time later, we're at some other college and this girl is talking about her new boyfriend, Preston. And what a surprise, it's him. And that's the end of the film. So until next time. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe and check out this other video. Thank you.